weight loss secrets to losing weight without much efforts are you overweight most people are afraid to admit they are it may not be a crime to be overweight but it can be harmful to your health and life if you fail to take action to reduce your weight nobody wants to be overweight and ugly if you're overweight are you interested in learning about the positive approach to taking action to deal with it here are some weight loss insights to help you lose weight effortlessly it has been reported that one out of every seven americans may be overweight so being overweight is a problem facing millions of americans today if you are overweight you can begin today to do something about it once you have made up your mind to lose weight you should make that commitment and go into it with a positive attitude we all know that losing weight can be quite a challenge. In fact, for some, it can be downright tough. It takes time, practice and support to change lifetime habits. This is why having the right attitude is of paramount importance. One well-known actress, Kirstie Alley who became overweight has just created a TV show labeled Fat Actress Show. Instead of being at home and feeling sorry for herself for becoming overweight, she decided to create a show about it. It is an example of having a positive attitude towards a problem and turning a misfortune into a good fortune that will yield millions of dollars. The discipline required to modify and control your eating habits and to lose weight is a process you must learn in order to succeed. You and you alone are the one who has the power to lose unwanted pounds. Think like a winner, and not a loser remember that emotions are like muscles and the ones you use most grow the strongest. If you always look at the negative side of things, you'll become a downbeat, pessimistic person. You'll fail. Even slightly negative thoughts have a greater impact on you and last longer than powerful positive thoughts. Negative thinking doesn't do you any good, it just holds you back from accomplishing the things you want to do. When a negative thought creeps into your mind, replace it reminding yourself that you're somebody, you have self-worth and you possess unique strengths and talents. Contemplate what lies ahead of you. Losing weight is not just about diets. It's about a whole new you and the possibility of creating a new life for yourself. Investigate the weight loss programs that appeal to you and that you feel will teach you the behavioral skills you need to stick with throughout the weight loss process. First you should look for support among family and friends. It can be an enormous help to discuss obstacles and share skills and tactics with others on the same path. You might look for this support from others you know who are in weight loss programs and you can seek guidance from someone you know who has lost weight and kept it off. There are success stories across the country today. On television and in newspapers, magazines and tabloids about people who have miraculously lost untold pounds and kept it off. In all instances they say their mental attitude as well as their outlook on life has totally changed. Diets and weight loss programs are more flexible now than they once were and there are many prepared foods already portioned out. They are made attractive and can be prepared in a matter of minutes. Low fat and low calorie foods are on shelves everywhere. You will probably need to learn new, wiser eating skills. You will want a weight loss regimen that gives you some control, rather than imposing one rigid system. Look for one that offers a variety of different eating plans, so you can choose the one that's best for you. Keep in mind, too, that your weight loss program will most likely include some physical exercises. Look at the exercising aspect of your program as fun and recreation and not as a form of grueling and sweaty work. The fact is that physical fitness is linked inseparable to all personal effectiveness in every field. Anyone willing to take the few simple steps that lie between them and fitness will shortly begin to feel better, and the improvement will reflect itself in every facet of their existence. Doctors now say that walking is one of the best exercises. It helps the total circulation of blood throughout the body, and thus has a direct effect on your overall feeling of health. There are things such as aerobics, jogging, swimming and many other exercises which will benefit a weight loss program. Discuss the options with your doctor and take his advice in planning your exercise and weight loss program. Warmly. Today's society is about speed. We no longer have to wait for the oven to warm our food because we have microwaves ready to do the work in less time. Breaking news events don't travel by telegraph across the great oceans, they are transmitted instantly with live video over the internet or bounced from the array of satellites that float in constant, geosynchronous orbit. It comes as no surprise that supplement sales are on the rise as we continue to seek out quick, convenient ways to lose fat, fast. Losing fat is not difficult. 
I have been coaching clients to break through plateaus and send their fat cells running for cover for years now. So why does this continue to be an elusive goal for so many people, who, struggle, just to lose a few inches? We can address this by creating a practical guide to lose fat. Is this a special diet that will have the pounds melting off? No. Is it a secret workout program that causes you to burn fat while you sleep? Nope, not that, either, your body already does it. So what on earth can we share? There is a secret, over 2000 years old, that was leaked to the general public by the father of medicine, Hippocrates. Somewhere along the way, it was lost again. Let's bring it back to light. It goes like this. If we could give every individual the right amount of nourishment and exercise, not too little and not too much, we would have found the safest way to health. Sound almost too good to be true, doesn't it? The problem is that in our efforts to find something, fast, we tend to resort to equations and formulas that should magically spit out the right number of calories, or eliminate entire food groups like sugars or carbohydrates in our quest to make our fat cells cry, what some people call, sweat. The triathlete will benefit by reducing fat and increasing muscle. It's not so much your weight that may slow you down, it's the percentage of that weight that comes from fat. So how do you target the love handles and saddle bags without losing your guns or wheels, as biceps and thigh muscles are affectionately termed in the bodybuilding world? 1. Move more, eat more. Whoa, wait a second. We all understand the idea behind moving more. That means burning more calories. But eat more. You thought it was eat less, didn't you? The truth is that you must eat more, more intelligently. You must eat more nutrient-dense foods. In turn, you will consume fewer calories. Less calories does not mean less nutrition, when done correctly. Even engineered foods, shakes, bars, and sports drinks, contain little nutritional value for the calories that go with them. There is nothing that beats nature's own packaging, fruit, vegetables, lean proteins, healthy fats, and so on. If you want to remain satisfied and full, try consuming over 50% of your calories from fresh fruit and vegetables. Your calories automatically go down, while your intake of fiber, vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients goes up. The idea is to consume foods as close to their natural state as possible. This means you'll do most of your shopping on the outer edge, or perimeter, of the grocery store, where the meats, eggs, and fresh produce exists, rather in the middle, where everything comes in boxes, bags, and cans. Want some nutrition-packed snacks? Try dates or figs with raw cashews. Roasting nuts may damage some of the healthy fats. You'll notice that roasted or cooked nuts are addictive, while raw nuts are not. Can't take the blandness. Buy roasted, lightly salted and raw nuts, then mix the two together for a compromise. Afraid of the fats? Don't be. These come loaded with fiber, protein, and carbohydrates, along with a healthy dose of fatty acids. My personal favorite is celery sticks with all-natural peanut butter. 2 make your muscles resist. As your calories decrease, there is a chance you may lose muscle mass. Avoid this by making your muscles resist. Your muscles don't know the difference between gravity or any other form of resistance. The way to keep them active and toned is to engage in weight-bearing activity. While the majority of your training will be focused on endurance, don't neglect the power of strength training. Strength training will improve your bone density, build lean muscle mass or preserve it while you are trimming the fat, and provide explosive power when you need that kick during your competition. It also helps maintain joint integrity and strength, which is necessary to combat the repeat use syndrome many runners develop in their ankles, knees, and hips. Because your goal is not to stand on stage in a bodybuilding competition, but instead an endurance goal, keep your workouts to two or three short, intense training sessions 20 or 30 minutes each, every week. Get in, give it 100%, and then recover and focus on the rest of your training. Stretch thoroughly. There is an added benefit as well, resistance training burns calories for hours after you are finished, and studies show the combination of resistance training and aerobics burns more fat than aerobics alone. 3. Slow and steady. Want a recipe for disaster? Try doing too much, too soon. Most people grasp this concept with training, so why do they fall short when it comes to nutrition? Think, better, not, perfect, when changing your nutrition habits. Do you want to crash? Go on a diet. Do you want to change?
transform your lifestyle. Small changes over time tend to last longer than quick fixes like fad diets or magic bullet pills and supplements. As an example, if you currently drink soda, don't go cold turkey and jump straight to water. Most will find themselves chomping at the bit for something cold and fizzy. Instead, make a gradual transition. First, switch to diet soft drinks. After you are used to the change, try sparkling mineral water with a lemon or lime. Finally, transition to water. Make small changes, get used to them, and you will be well on your way to trim, fit body. Conclusion. If you are like most people, you did not suddenly gain fat overnight. It was a gradual transition. So why should you expect losing the weight to be any faster? Take it slow. A pound of weight per week is a good rule of thumb for permanent fat loss. Anything faster may be too restrictive and could be lean mass, even muscle, instead of simply fat weight. Perhaps the most useful tool for losing fat isn't a nutrition guide or workout program after all, it is a trait. Patience is by far the most powerful tool to lose fat and keep it off. The purpose of this article is not to scrutinize, vilify, or verify the so-called milk diet. There are a number of resources available both online and offline which can help you and your physician decide which of the several diet plans or personalized weight loss programs is right for you. No matter what plan you choose, that plan should lead you to healthy weight loss and to the attainment of your weight loss goals. And if the resources that help you in your decision are sponsored by weight loss professionals, they won't just point you to one of fad diets. Professionals know that fad diets just don't work. You may see initial results, but the risk to your health is high, and the chances of keeping the weight off are low. I went to one of the major search engines and in the search box I typed the words, milk diet and skim milk diet. Try it, and you'll laugh at how some sharp entrepreneurs are trying capitalize on one of the latest crazes. One of my favorites is an ad along the side of the page which redirects you to an eBay area where you could purchase, no lie, milk paraphernalia to help you keep up the milk diet team spirit. All the vintage milk bottle tops and signs were marked down to special prices. Oh, and remember the classic grapefruit diet? What a shot in the arm that craze gave to the citrus industry. Of course, I have a distant cousin named Grady who at family gatherings still reminds everyone of how his wife spent more on a 10-speed juicer, now kept as a relic in the attic than on him that year for their anniversary and Christmas combined. Now that's serious juicing. The point I want to make is simple. You want to lose weight and keep it off, right? You will never achieve that by pulling out your credit card to pay homage to the next diet guru or program with a celebrity's name attached to it. These fad diets promise to give you what you want through the latest secret revealed or truth now discovered. And it shouldn't surprise you to learn that only the guru or the people sponsoring the plan can bring to you the latest secret revealed in this special offer for only three installments of just $29.95 plus $14.95 shipping and handling. By the way, since when does it cost $14.95 to ship a welcome letter, some funny-looking plastic things, and a book? Maybe the extra cost is the handling. In any event, you don't need any new secret revealed nor an undiscovered truth now discovered. What you need is to go back to diet basics. There's nothing wrong with a diet plan that proclaims the values of either milk or grapefruit. Both grapefruit and milk provide wonderful essential nutrients which help you have good nutrition and balanced meals. And that is my point. Losing the weight you need to lose and keeping it off is about modifying your eating habits to have overall good nutrition. It's not about focusing on one nutrient or food group. In fact, true weight loss professionals would consider as suspect any diet program which radically reduces or increases just one component of a balanced diet. That's not a good way to lose weight. To illustrate what I'm trying to say, take a look at the relationship between weight loss and milk. Milk contains nine essential nutrients, making it one of the most nutrient-rich drinks you can enjoy. Just one 8-ounce glass of milk puts you well on your way to meeting the daily value for calcium and other key nutrients. Calcium, as most know, helps maintain strong bones and teeth. It also plays a role in nerve function. You probably also know by now, thanks to the recent milk diet fad, that milk can play a significant role in helping you reach your weight loss goals. In fact, here's part of what the American Dietetic Association has to say about milk and weight loss. 
A calcium-rich eating plan, especially one that includes at least three servings of milk a day, seems to provide the nutritional support you need for healthy effective weight loss. In fact, research suggests that milk may help promote the loss of body fat while maintaining more muscle, which is important when dieting. Dropping dairy foods as a calorie-cutting tactic is not only bad for bones, it could make it even harder to lose weight. Now the money-focused marketers and entrepreneurs have brought milk to the forefront to promote weight loss leading to sales. And I would bet that there are those who probably went to the grocer and bought milk after reading an article or hearing on television about the miracles of milk and its effect on weight loss. But instead of drinking the suggested 24 ounces each day, only three 8-ounce glasses, several of the more zealous increased their intake of milk by another glass or two to speed up the process. After all, everyone knows that if a little of something is good, then a lot must be great, right? Wrong. As good for you as milk can be, it can also be detrimental to your health if you drink too much according to recent studies. Milk has always been milk. It can benefit our overall health. More specific, milk, along with other essential elements, can help promote weight loss. Too much milk can be harmful. But at the end of the day, healthy weight loss is, and will always be first and foremost, about diet basics eating right, exercising, and having a lifestyle which promotes good health and nutrition. That's what will lead you to weight loss success. We immersions will continue to extol the virtues and hidden mysteries of the grapefruit, at least until we come up with a pill that's just as good. But have you been to the attic lately? Any juicers up there lying around unused and relegated to a place beside the lava lamp? And tomorrow, or perhaps the day after, the milk diet will fade away. We'll be left with our vintage bottle tops, maybe a sign or two, and a lingering dissatisfaction over our inability to unlock the mystery of how the handling is calculated in shipping and handling costs. Well, take heart. Through all the fad diets and gurus and secrets revealed which should have been kept hidden, one principle remains to guide you. If you really want to live healthy, lose weight and keep it off, there's no substitution for exercise, good nutrition and balanced diet. I am not a diet and fitness guru or an obesity expert. I'm just a normal person who was where you are today, overweight and hating it. Two years ago I lost weight without throwing money into the multi-billion dollar diet industry, and you can too. This booklet was written to show you how. The air six principles upon which successful weight loss is based. These principles are, in order of importance, self-esteem, commitment, movement, proportion, and hydration. Consistent application of these principles will result in lasting weight loss and better health. Before I outline just how you can apply these principles in your life, I would like to explore what I feel are some common misconceptions surrounding the attainment of lasting weight loss. Misconception number one, being overweight is hereditary, and therefore nothing can be done to help the obese. I feel very strongly about this particular misconception, which I believe was created to bolster the research efforts of so-called obesity experts. First of all let me say that some people, though very few, are born with conditions that make them obese. But for the majority of us, even if both of our parents were fat, obesity is not hereditary. If a child grows up in a household that does not participate in regular and vigorous physical activity, where high-fat, marginally nutritious food is served, and overeating is the rule, that child will become obese. If a child inherits anything, it inherits bad habits. Misconception number two, there are shortcuts to lasting weight loss. The high incidences of yo-yo dieting tell another story. Let's say you go on a liquid diet and quickly drop 10 pounds or so. Yes. This is a shortcut, but will it last? Not likely. Most people who lose weight this way gain it all back and then some almost as quickly as they lost it. Remember Oprah? Why doesn't this shortcut work? Simple, the dieters never unlearned the unhealthy habits that caused them to gain weight. There are no shortcuts to lasting weight loss, period. If you want to lose weight and keep it off, you must make lifestyle changes and adhere to them. Misconception number three. I can achieve lasting weight loss without exercise. I'm sorry, this just isn't true. This is a lesson I learned the hard way. Dieting alone will cause you to drop pounds, but it also works against you by teaching your body to get by on less food, thereby slowing down your metabolism or calorie burning capability. This is why if you don't exercise to rev up your metabolism, eating in a normal healthy way will cause you to gain weight. 
Regular vigorous exercise, 20 to 30 minutes, 4 to 5 days per week for beginners, combined with sensible eating, is the only way to achieve lasting weight loss. Now that we have dispelled three of the most common dieting misconceptions, we can concentrate on how to apply these methods that will help us achieve and maintain weight loss. Self-esteem. You may have heard the saying, it's not what you're eating but what's eating you. Many overweight people suffer from low self-esteem, and sometimes the low self-esteem precedes the weight problem. The latter applied to me. Shy, lonely and lacking confidence, I turned to food for comfort and soon went from a svelte size 7 to a size 16, which made me even more unhappy. When I'd finally had enough of being teased and miserable, I decided it was time to change. I didn't decide to lose weight to look good in a party dress or to please my boyfriend, but because I wanted to. I decided that I was important enough to take care of. My decision was a demonstration of self-esteem. If you don't have self-esteem, if you don't feel worthy of love and acceptance, you will never change. Motivation for weight loss or anything must come from within. So, before you even think about weight loss, do some work on your ego. Make a list of things you have to be thankful for. Make a list of your good points and talents. Tell yourself that you are an important human being and you deserve to be treated with dignity, whatever your size. Most importantly, do not compare yourself with other people. Everyone is unique, with different talents and inheritances. Don't become obsessed with obtaining what someone else has, rather learn to recognize and develop those talents and characteristics that are unique to you. Lastly, reach out to other people. Treat people how you would like to be treated. Look out for volunteer opportunities in your community. Sharing your gifts with others is a wonderful way to make them feel good, and make you feel good about yourself. Note, some of us may have problems and scars that are so deep we may need professional assistance. If you develop an obsession with food that interferes with your life, or have thoughts of harming yourself or others, seek help immediately from a mental health practitioner. Commitment. Stick to it Iveness is the cornerstone of any weight loss regime. Some people call it discipline or willpower. But what if you fall off the wagon? Well, that is the real test of commitment. If for whatever reason, you do fall off the wagon, don't worry. You gain nothing by agonizing over a skipped workout or an extra cookie. Instead, concentrate on how you will get right back on that wagon once you have fallen off. Persevere and you will triumph, I promise you. Remember that keeping the weight off is a lifetime commitment. Don't turn it into a lifetime of guilt and recriminations. Movement. Exercise is absolutely essential to maintain weight loss, and there are no two ways about it. It revs up your metabolism so you can efficiently burn calories, and it helps you feel good about yourself and look great. Establishing exercise as a habit will be difficult at first. I still struggle with the lazies. But consider for a moment all the benefits of exercise, such as, lowered cholesterol and blood pressure, the prevention of diabetes and greater resistance to common illnesses, the slowing down of the aging process and a better sex life. If these benefits don't motivate you, I don't know what will. Exercise should be fun, not a chore. Put it at the top of your to-do list and pick an activity you will enjoy. Walking is wonderful for beginners. It costs nothing and you have almost zero chance of getting injured. If you're not sure what to do, visit a local gym or Y, where they have professionals who can help you select an appropriate exercise. If you're over 40 or have a history of being sedentary, make sure to see a physician before starting any exercise program. Here are some tips to help you stick to your exercise program. 1. Enlist the help of a friend who regularly exercises. 2. Join an exercise class. Be sure that it is convenient and close to work or home. And 3. Make exercise a priority by working out at the same time of day every time. In my own experience I have found morning workouts to be the best. If you can adhere to an exercise regime for 90 days, congratulations. You will have established regular exercise as a lifelong habit. Proportion. To maintain weight loss, how much you eat is just as important as what you eat. By following sensible portion sizes you won't have to count calories, and you won't overeat. Before I began my weight loss odyssey, I saw a registered dietitian or nutritionist. You can find one at your doctor's office, in private practice, or at your local hospital. Nutritionists are trained to design special diets for people with certain conditions, as well as those seeking to lose weight. 
A nutritionist will teach you how to eat properly, and how much to eat, in just a few visits. Best of all, the nutritionist will charge you considerably less than the multi-billion dollar diet industry with its powders, pills and pre-packaged foods. Most insurance plans cover visits to nutritionists, usually at 50%. Ask your doctor for a recommendation. Substitution. If you love junk food, like I do, you are no doubt loath to give it up. The good news is that you don't have to. For every high-cal food there is an equally good tasting low-cal food. How can you find great tasting low-fat snack foods? By reading the food labels at the grocery store. For instance, if you love chocolate bars try a York peppermint patty. One patty has 4 grams of fat as compared to the typical candy bar which has, hold on to your hat minus 14 grams. Instead of potato chips try popcorn or pretzels, which are very low in fat. Can't live without cookies. Then reach for snack wells, fig newtons, ginger snaps or nilla wafers. Got a love affair with hamburgers, pizza and tacos. Make them at home, substituting ground turkey for beef, and skim cheese for regular. You may be surprised to know that you can oven fry your French fried potatoes and buy non-fat refried beans for your taco. The most important substitution you can make is to throw out high-fat dairy products and replace them with skim. You can also get non-fat margarine, sour cream, and mayonnaise. Try these substitutions. Most taste just like the real thing, others take getting used to, but the savings in calories and fat are significant. Hydration. Not drinking enough water can also be harmful to us. Any number of people are walking around almost dehydrated. Drinking a lot of water in and of itself won't help you lose weight. However, many of us mistake feelings of thirst for hunger, so staying properly hydrated can prevent overeating, which often leads to obesity. The other great thing about water is it helps you look great by keeping your skin soft and pliable. The only absolute truth in the area of exercise and weight loss is this, becoming more physically active will burn calories, and as long as you don't absorb those calories back by eating more, you will lose weight. Getting active and getting your muscles to burn more calories is an essential part of a weight management program. It will improve your circulation and your nervous system more than any diet could. Regular exercise can fight all signs of aging, lower cholesterol ratings and reduce osteoporosis. But the question that fuels the multi-million dollar fitness industry is, what exercise is best? This is a very contentious area. Mr. Weightless will only tell the simple truth, so below is the information that has been proven to be true, but the final judgment is yours. Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady exercise that raises your heart rate a significant amount, but that still allows you to breathe without struggling for at least 20 minutes will encourage fat loss. This is called aerobic exercise. The term aerobic means, with air, meaning that your muscles are burning sugar and fat in the presence of oxygen. To be able to burn calories in the presence of oxygen, you have to be taking regular breaths, so the activity you're doing must be a moderate pace, at most. For many people who are overweight, this can mean simply a fast walk. For many athletes, this may be a quick jog. It doesn't matter where you are along the spectrum as long as your heart rate is raised and you can breathe normally or carry on a conversation. Why 20 minutes? At first, your body will only burn blood sugar because it is readily available. If you keep going long enough, your body realizes that blood sugar won't be enough, so it starts burning fat as well. If you stop exercising before this happens, then your body will simply be tired and you will feel hungry because your blood sugar will be low, see my article on satiety, click here. Your body wants to retain the fat and avoid burning it. This is a survival mechanism, read my article on adaptation that you can find on my website. Dot dot dot. Or does maximum intensity? There is another school of thought that has had similar success with just as much good theory behind it. Vigorous exercise for 10 to 15 minutes will burn just as many calories from your blood sugar as a longer duration exercise, but it will also raise your metabolism for many hours afterwards. In other words, you won't burn fat during your workout, but you will slowly burn fat for a period of time after finishing. This method has been shown to have more dramatic effects on lowering body fat than the low-intensity exercise described above. This is anaerobic exercise, meaning, without air. You'll be going fast enough that your breathing won't be enough to fuel the calorie burning. 
carbohydrates blood sugar will burn without oxygen, which leads to the creation of lactic acid. This is what accumulates in your muscles, and makes them feel like they're burning. However, there are serious drawbacks to this method, which make it difficult to recommend this strategy exclusively. Before embracing the high-intensity mindset, read below. First, if a person is just starting a program, they risk serious injury if they try to exercise too vigorously. Knees, hips and ankle joints are very common injury sites, and muscle cramping can be very painful even if it is short-lived. Don't exercise at your peak intensity until you're used to exercising. Secondly, high energy activities tend to be high impact on the body. Running fast, playing racquetball, and jumping jacks wear down the connective tissues in the body, so even if a person is not directly injured, they are causing long-term damage. People who run road races often have chronic hip, knee and ankle pain. If you decide to pursue this type of high energy program, I highly recommend a reclined stationary bike to reduce the strain in your joints. The third problem is, how vigorous does a person need to exercise? If you go at your absolute peak, you may only last 3 minutes, maybe less, and that won't be effective. It is difficult to gauge how much you can push yourself to be exhausted exactly at 12 minutes. Finally, though vigorous exercise technically takes less time, it requires changing into workout clothes, doing the exercise, then taking a shower and changing back again. That means scheduling more time for the preparation than for low-intensity activities, as well as having access to a place to change. On the other hand, going for a brisk walk you can do on a whim, maybe more than once a day, in your regular clothes. The best of both worlds, two alternatives. You can get good results using either method, but the best method is to combine the two. If you're in the gym using a stationary bike, your goal should be to do a warm-up of aerobic activity for about 20 minutes, followed by 10 minutes of anaerobic exercise. For many people, a 20-minute brisk walk followed by a 10-minute fast bicycling makes the most sense. For those who play high-intensity sports like racquetball, a light warm-up on a stationary bike for 20 minutes before a match can kick-start the fat-burning process. Everyone is different. That may be too much for someone who is just starting out, though. The best recommendation is to start at a low-intensity activity like walking, and gradually increasing the intensity week to week. A good way to do this is to walk down the street directly away from your home for 20 minutes, then turn around and walk back at a slightly quicker pace. This low-intensity 40-minute exercise every day should be fine for the first week. Don't aim to run right from the start, start slow, be patient, and improve consistently every day. After a week or two, turn the walk away portion into a quick power walk and try to jog all the way back. Remember to use time, not distance, as your measuring stick. Making your workouts shorter is not the goal, we always want our fat-burning exercise to last 30 minutes, and our warm-up aerobics to last 20 minutes, regardless of distance. The best fat-burning workout is difficult to program into a stationary bike, and works best on the street. This is, interval training. This type of workout allows you to get the benefits of high-intensity exercise and make it last over 20 minutes to burn fat right away. The formula is simple, walk for 2 minutes, then run for 1 minute. Then repeat. Use the walking portion to catch your breath and prepare for the next high-intensity interval. At first, your high-intensity may simply be a jog, don't overdo it. Over the weeks, increase the intensity of your high-intensity portion. When you get up to a run, do not try to increase the duration of the high-intensity portion. You'll benefit more by continuing to increase the pace to a sprint, if possible. Keep the duration of the entire workout to 30 minutes or more. As I mentioned above, with all street running, beware the impact in your joints. Frequency. How regular should exercise be? Every day. Anyone can fit in one half hour into their schedule. You should look forward to the physical activity, so choose one that you like to do if walking isn't for you. Remember that you're training your body to lose weight. If you don't exercise every day, your body will think that when you do exercise, it's a minor exceptional change. Only by doing it every day will your body come to expect it, and will therefore prepare for it. Training your body to expect to burn calories is half the battle. If anything, take the stairs instead of the elevator. Because the internet allows so many millions of people to be connected to any single site, 
function or feature, many programmers and marketing folks have put their heads together to come up with some really neat online tools. Many of these tools are not only useful and convenient, but they are oftentimes free to use. We like free. Some examples include area code locators, mortgage calculators, metric conversion charts and many, many more. Today I ran across a free tool that is available to us courtesy of the US government. The Department of Health and Human Services, National Institutes of Health, makes this tool available. The tool is called an Interactive Menu Planner and it's worth spending a few minutes exploring. The tool's original intent seems to be as a menu planner that one would use on a daily basis in order to calculate the total calories, total fat and total carbohydrates for all three meals each and every day. Because the interface is a little bit, clunky, and the tool takes a while to plug in an entire day's meals, I don't think it's really practical to use every day. However, that doesn't mean that it's not useful. Load it up in a browser and take a peek for yourself while I point out a few things that I found interesting. The first thing you need to do is to select the number of daily calories you plan to consume. The number can range from 1200 to 2000. There are no guidelines as to how many calories you should start with so use common sense to select a number. Factors such as body size, less the fat you want to lose, type of occupation, amount of daily exercise, and age should be taken into consideration. Your doctor may have a suggestion as well. Once you've selected a daily calorie target, select breakfast as your first meal. Mentally segment your daily calories into three fairly equal parts. If you've selected 2000 calories, you should try to aim for around 600 to 650 calories per meal, leaving a few left over for an evening snack. Move over to the right where the food itself is located. Start at the top and select a food item from the food groups you typically eat for breakfast. It doesn't matter if it's what you ate today, or are planning to eat, the education is in the experience. As you select a food item, you must remember to also select the number of servings in the next column. For instance, if you typically eat two kiwi fruit at breakfast, select one kiwi from the food column and select two from the servings column. The thing that I really like about this tool is that it updates after every item is selected. Continue on through breakfast adding items as you go. You may select multiple items from any of the food groups. As you continue, you will see the menu for breakfast grow longer for each added item. Try to ignore the totals on the left-hand side until you have finished selecting each of the items that make up your typical breakfast. Once done, look at the totals to see how much damage you've done. If you find, like I did, that you need to make some adjustments to each meal if you want to get three meals a day in, you can remove some of your items or reduce the number of servings. To do so, simply select one of the items already in your breakfast menu and change the servings to zero to remove it completely, or just lower the number to reduce it. Once you've set your breakfast menu, continue on to lunch and repeat the process. After you've finished your lunch menu, repeat the process for dinner. If you still have some calories left over, you can go ahead and treat yourself to a snack. If you exceed your total allowed calories at any time, a warning message will pop up. There are a few things about this exercise that I believe are particularly educational. The first is the degree to which the daily calories can be thrown off by simple things such as beverages. For my breakfast I selected a bagel. I watched carefully as I slowly added a tablespoon of cream cheese and some jelly, thinking they would cause a dramatic increase. To my dismay, a couple teaspoons of jelly and a tablespoon of cream cheese added only 75 calories. It was the bagel that was the major offender, coming in at a whopping 320 calories. I decided to see how much the daily totals would be affected by selecting a large glass of Cool Aid as a drink. I have children in the house and Cool Aid is available and convenient. But is it a good decision? For my lunch menu, I selected 8 ounces Cool Aid as a beverage. But wait, do you know how small an 8 ounces glass is? I plugged in two servings just to be safe. To my horror, that single beverage selection came to 232 calories, or just over 11% of my daily total. I quickly zeroed out the cool aid and opted instead for water. Another shocker was the cream that I use in my morning coffee or tea. Drinking two cups of black coffee adds only 20 calories to your daily menu. 
However, if you lighten up those two cups of coffee with a couple of tablespoons of cream each, you can add nearly 100 calories to your diet. A teaspoon of sugar adds only 15 calories, and that's typically the item we'd be inclined to abandon first. The second thing that I realized is that, with a little bit of planning, a person can still eat a substantial amount of food and stay within their daily caloric budget, especially if you choose wisely. I'm a substantially sized guy with an active lifestyle who should be able to consume 2000 calories per day and still lose weight. Using this tool can help me do so without starving and without busting my budget. Again, I don't think it's terribly practical to suggest you use this tool every day but referring to it every now and again can help you ascertain the average number of calories you are consuming each day, make sure you aren't making any bad menu decisions, and help you to win the battle of the bulge. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and for more ways on how to lose weight check out the link in the description.